Hi everyone! Welcome to uh, another transformation video, another collection video. The way we've decided decided to do this, if you have been watching the previous videos, is any one of the movies that had a substantial amount of dolls, like in the 15 doll count or more, would get their own video. Now, there's a lot of smaller movies that were made or just collections that say like Brave where they made a lot of dolls, but I don't have any. And I decided to break them into two different videos just for the sake of being able to show them to you guys, but I don't want to like film like a, a five doll Anastasia video or something, which some people wanted me to do. So you will get to see them, and if I need to update them later I can, but the way we're dividing it is we're going to have one for my miscellaneous Disney dolls, and then the other will be for my miscellaneous animated film dolls. Um, so, so not Disney. Yeah, some people seemed to think I didn't know that some of these movies weren't Disney in my main, like my... Even original. though the title says Disney and anime. And I even ta say in the beginning they're not all Disney, but like, also just so I don't, um, don't get like the bombardment of triggered people <laughs> who are angry that like, that's not Disney. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're going to do. So this is going to be all of the smaller collections kind of lumped together. I hope you enjoy. They are pretty much all of these dolls are in the miscellaneous Disney and animated character album on Flickr. So check that album out if you're looking to see pictures of these dolls, read additional information, see what stuff they came with, etc. And we're going to get to showing you the dolls. So I've arranged these dolls by movie in alphabetical order just because that's how my inventory is done and it's easy here. Please excuse the Rapunzel dolls from the last video. This is the original, I want to say Alice in Wonderland doll by Mattel. She's just from 1994, generically packaged as Alice in Wonderland. You can kind of tell these were made to go with the classics line because of the pixie dust. Yes, she's clearly just a skipper doll. Mm. Um, that's not even a special head mold. But Colleen always loved this kind of style Disney doll because she's a huge Skipper collector. So I would consider both of my Alice in Wonderland dolls more hers. Um, and we got this doll in the Clueless lot in 2017. And most of those dolls from that lot were in really nice shape. And she uh, doesn't have her shoes, but she had everything else pretty much. And she's really, really cute. She reminds me of Homecoming Queen Skipper if you look at the face. And then this is my favorite fairy tale, Alice. I prefer her because I like her slightly more modern facial screening and she I actually do too, which is weird because I yeah. thought I liked the other one better. She looks less like a skipper. She still has a skipper vibe. But we got her um, boxed at the flea market and I had wanted this doll for so long. I used to stock this doll on eBay um, because the favorite fairy tale collection in general is one of my absolute favorites of all time. And I have all of the dolls now except Ariel. Um, and she was the other doll I was missing for the longest time. Then we have Atlantis Milo. Um, I have seen this movie. Uh, it is cute, but it was never like one that I watched all the time or was like a favorite. However, I loved the dolls since I got back into collecting. I especially love dolls from like kind of obscure. not as popular, yeah, obscure movies, especially if they didn't make many dolls because I just love the variety. I used to stock him on eBay and we got him boxed for five dollars at the flea market last yeah, year. Yeah, last year. And we actually already had a shirt just like this that we got on a Harry Potter doll. And um, now I'll always think of him in our As Told by Dolly's video wearing his toga. I know. Yeah, I feel kind of bad for Milo because he only has been living with us for about a year. And I don't think he expected to get roped into that whole awkward love scene in the toga where he's like kissing Pocahontas, John, and Kokum. I don't think he knew that was going to happen for Milo. Then we have my Brave dolls. So this is the uh, 2011 Brave Merida doll from Mattel. And um, basically she was just marketed with the movie. Now, I had like kind of mixed feelings about the Brave dolls when they came out. I liked the Disney Store dolls from the get-go. I was in love with them, but I thought the Mattel dolls looked really weird and cheap. So I wasn't planning on getting any, but then when I got into that kick for newer Mattel dolls in 2014, I could not resist this gal when she turned up at Walmart on sale for like $5. She was at um, the Walmart near where we got Nevaeh. Yes. Then we have my uh, most sentimental Merida doll that I own besides one of my Disney store ladies. We got her in 2014. Now there is quite the story behind her. So we were out donating stuff at the Salvation Army and we saw dolls on the ground. 
This Merida was one of them. She was just wearing her dress and shoes and Colleen felt so bad. She picked Merida up and vouched that we should, you know, get her. And she had like pink mark all over her face. Yes, she was completely colored on and that was part of why um, I really wanted her because I knew I could save her and I didn't want her getting thrown out. So, you know, we got her home and I fixed her up, got rid of all the stains and it turns out when I identified her, I had already gotten this cape. I was wearing it, you know, the flea market where we found the other piece of the cape yes someone we bought as a body donor I believe from that seller it was a live doll wasn't it yes um yeah it was like a, a Barbie head on a live body with cut hair yeah um and then we went back to that flea market and I found this cut cape had been cut and you can see where I sewn it so we went back and we bought more dolls and I just took the hunk of cape with me yeah like we actually made a special trip to get that cape because so, we knew yes. it was part of Merida. I know she's a cheap doll, but I love her anyways. Then these are both the original Disney Store Merida dolls that came out when the movie did. And I remember the first time I went to the Disney Store as an adult, back in 2012, this movie was the new movie and I saw the Brave displays all over the place and I really wanted to buy the dolls even though I thought the movie sounded dumb at the time. But they weren't on sale and I've spent all my money on the sale dolls. But I got this doll in the Disney Store bin of 2015 but she was naked as Merida yeah, would say. Naked. <laughs> and we ended up mating her with her outfit last year. This outfit, the cape, one shoe, that was in the um, Sweet Sunday Surprises bin which was just a uh, basically a free lot with a Barbie dream house and a bunch of dolls and clothes that one of our neighbors put out. And then before I had her outfit, I couldn't have her on display because I didn't have any Merida clothes to put her in. Now I have tons, but I didn't for a long time. I bought her for a dollar at the flea market because she had her cape and her little like thing for her arrows and she had one shoe, but you'll notice that I only have one pair between them and that's because in the Sweet Sunday Surprise lot there was one shoe and she was wearing one shoe and then I mated them and gave them to my old doll who currently is on display because they take shifts. Yeah, because she was in storage for so long waiting for a dress. And then we have my lovely, beloved 2013 Disney Store uh, Princess Classic Film Collection pack Merida. She was sold with like a Disney Princess sampler pack. I've talked a lot about this set throughout many videos because it was a big pack and there was a lot of dolls and they're all for different movies. Colleen got me this set as a gift in the fall of 2013. It was sort of like a, I'm going, I got a job now, I'm going to be out of the house for the first time, you'll be alone since dad passed away and I know you love Disney and I know you've always wanted one of these packs and <laughs> it was expensive, it was like I remember when we went it was expensive. It was like that. buying an American Girl doll, yeah. it was an investment. Um, but it was one of the most epic purchases of all times. Then we have Christmas. my Royal Shimmer Merida <laughs> by Hasbro. She and ironically, I got her at the same Salvation Army that my first Hasbro doll came from, who was Rapunzel. Now, we got her recently in this year, in 2019. We got her the same day, actually, as this Elsa. Um, and there was a bunch of the Hasbro dolls there as well as the newer Mattel dolls, but I wasn't originally going to buy many because I just find a lot of this generation of Disney dolls really generic. But I saw Merida and I was like, oh, it's Merida. Oh, I like her. And then, for some reason, she took on this whole personality of her own. And now she's a running joke with me and Colleen. Nobody Whether we're filming Mary. or not, it's always, you got a naked. Yeah, we're always just like, your mom is naked. And, <laughs> me mom, me mom is naked. I love her. She makes me laugh love Brave too. That like I the first time I laughed that I actually couldn't watch that. I actually like couldn't breathe because I was We were laughing so hard. That part where they're fishing it was great. That might be my favorite of like between Frozen, Tangled, um, The Princess and the Frog and Brave. I think Brave might be my favorite. So these next two Elsa dolls are from that same Salvation Army. However, this was my first Elsa doll. We got her the same day as the John Star Rapunzel in another video. Yes and um, I really wanted an Elsa doll. I wanted the Disney Store one, but uh, I this was the first Elsa I had the chance to get secondhand, so I just bought her, and um, I don't know, she's like a dollar or something. I'll admit that I don't like the molded clothes. I feel like that is one of the major pitfalls to just the frozen Mattel dolls in general. It's like 
they couldn't be bothered just to give them clothes, which is a bit upsetting. But, I mean, I have fun accessorizing them to make them look fancier. And she will always have been my first Elsa. But this was my dream Elsa. This is the original Disney Store Elsa. She has the little articulated feet. She is magnificent. She is one of the most gorgeous dolls of all time. And I got her this year, like I said, the same day as Merida. And my heart, it fluttered out of my chest when I saw her there. I was so excited. Then we have my two original Frozen dolls. These were my first ones in my collection. These are the Troll Wedding dolls made by Mattel. So we have Anna and Kristoff. They were sold in the pack together. Now, I remember seeing this set at our local Walmart here and there, but it was expensive. It was like 30 or $40. And I mean, like I said, molded clothes. Come on, people. Like, we're going to pay that much for some molded clothes and some cute figures? I don't think so. So we had to this was in 2016 this was around the time i started my channel i actually have a video of me painting their stands way back at the start of my channel and um we had gotten our guinea pig isla around that time and she had gotten an eye infection so then she gave the eye infection to roxy we had to take roxy to the vet and then we had to go to the vet again because roxy wasted all of her eye drops because she kept turning her head <laughs> so we had to make the trip out to the vets to get more eye drops for her and on the way home since we didn't have the guinea pig because we were just getting eye drops we were able to stop in at the stores around there and that's where we found the set and it wasn't it like five dollars or something $10. yeah it was like wicked cheap. yeah i forget i probably say it on my flick it was like five or ten dollars and i was like so because this is one of my favorite scenes from the movie oh we have treasured traditions elsa by hasbro um, she was my first store-bought Hasbro doll. I got her for $5 on sale, um, in the fall of last year. Colleen saw her and she was like, oh, Shelly, this Elsa has a cool outfit and she looks more like the Disney store. And she Elsa. came with some accessories and I thought, you know, considering she just looked like a really nice doll for, like, the price on clearance, I'm like, hey, let's buy her. So I was all about that and she's adorable. <clears throat> and I do think she's a lot prettier. Like, the metal ones look bug-eyed. The Disney store are gorgeous, and then she ranks in, in the middle between them. So then we have my mini Hercules dolls. This was one of the movies that they did not make a lot of dolls for. There's only a handful, and um, for me, when I started getting back into collecting, Hercules was always one of my favorite movies, and I always wanted the dolls, but they weren't really carried around here. So as an adult collector, in the earliest days of me collecting again, I was Hercules crazy. So this is my most expensive Disney doll in my collection. You're looking at him right here. This is Golden Glow Hercules. He was $56 sealed in his box on eBay. That included the shipping and tax and stuff. Um, it was ridiculous, I know, but I've had him for eight years, and so honestly, like, it really doesn't matter. I've never had a chance to get him in the wild. And for what they went for on eBay at the time, I remember someone was in a bidding war and paid over $100 for him, which was ridiculous. I wouldn't do it these days, but at the time, I really, really, really wanted him, and I did, wasn't patient. Um, and Dad got him for me, so I love him. He's really, like, hunky, and part of why I wanted to get both of my Hercules dolls, you'll meet my other guy in a minute, um, like, on eBay. I imagined if I found one naked at the flea market, which we have seen one naked at the flea market oh, at one yeah. time. Um, they wouldn't fit anything. What would I put them in? And then I would be bummed out because I'd have this doll I couldn't display and couldn't even wear clothes. So that was my logic, and he is amazing. Then we have my five Fashion Secrets Megaras. Um, Megara is the proper way of saying it. I'm going to call her Megara because that's just how I do. So these are all Fashion Secrets Megaras. Take them in. Take them in. So <clears throat> long story short, because I have a whole My Story post pretty much all about <laughs> Megs. When I was about six years old and this movie first came out, we were at this store, this little, like, weird kind of discount warehouse type store. Department, too. Yeah, um, that, was, that we went to school clothes shopping at. And I remember there was, in the basement, there was, like, a floor that literally went down, like a slope, and there was a toy section. And we were in there, and that's when I first saw this Fashion Secrets Meg. I thought she was the most gorgeous thing in the whole world, and I really wanted her, but I didn't have the money to get her that day. And the next time we were at the store, she was gone. That was the only store I remember seeing Hercules dolls at. And it wasn't, like, super close to us or anything. I had dreams about getting this doll. It was, like, honestly my top, like, Disney Grail doll besides Palace Wedding Jasmine for most of my childhood. And then, in 2004, 
we started buying bins of dolls at the flea market, so basically people's entire collections that they were selling, and this Fashion Secrets Meg turned up naked in said bin with just her hair accessory. So she was my first Meg, and despite being totally tortured looking, I was so grateful to have her, and she was my Meg, and she was my favorite doll for quite some time. I still don't have an outfit for her, but I bought her this fashion pack um, special. So we'll get on to my second Meg because this is where the fashion pack comes into play. So <clears throat> as an adult collector, I really wanted to get a mint Meg. I didn't care if she was boxed, I just wanted one that had her outfit and her little pieces because I wanted that experience I didn't have as a kid. There were several ones that I tried bidding on, this was before I figured out a good technique on eBay, and I would always lose and I would get upset. Luckily this led to me winning one of my Jasmine dolls on eBay because I was angry. She was so mad that she just like won her Raja Jasmine. Yeah I know, which would have been one of the harder ones to get later, so hey it all worked out. I was getting really frustrated, I felt like I could never beat these other people who wanted her and the price would get expensive. Well, I was looking on Google one day, and on the Google image search, a search, I found an expired listing on eBay that had this Meg doll, complete, with all of her little clips and stuff, and this entire fashion pack with all the pieces. And I saw that, and I was like, that was my Meg doll, how did I miss it? She had been listed, like, a few weeks before, and I was heartbroken. Well, I happened to check eBay, like, uh, the next day, and she had been relisted. Maybe someone didn't pay for the bid, who knows? I don't know, but it was the same seller and everything, and it was meant to be. And I was scared, because I thought other people were going to outbid me, but fate so had it that someone else listed the exact same doll with the exact same fashion pack all loose the only difference is that this doll not mine but the other one had the empty box no tray nothing just a box a piece of cardboard and cellophane and i was like this is my chance i have to win the other meg doll that doesn't have the box and guess what all of the other sucker collectors <laughs> abandoned meg that doll went for like 60 or 70 dollars something outrageous for just the stupid box and i got mine for 30 <laughs> With we the happy. spare fashion pack that I wanted to dress old Meg. So, yeah, I mean, if you're going to collect boxes, like, at least get the tray in the box so you can stick Meg back in the box. Why pay that much for a piece of packaging? <laughs> I will never understand. I have no idea. <laughs> but then we have uh, my second, my sorry, my third uh, fashion secrets Meg. No, she's not basic Meg. Basic Meg is bosom ear. So these Megs, the fashion secrets, all have the tiny boobs um and then the they're like on the um the 95 teen skipper yes mold. yeah but with tiny feet um <clears throat> but the basic megs have the regular 60 oh that's like the mackie mold right smaller yeah i think so um the 66 body with the bigger boobs is what the basic megs have this outfit i didn't get on her anyways but just to clarify so i found her at a yard sale and the reason why I bought her for like a dollar or two was because A, I was mega obsessed and B, I already had this outfit because I had seen this outfit on my beloved Doggy Park Barbie at the flea market for two dollars and I was like, that's a Meg dress, I'm buying it. I ended up falling in love with Doggy Park Barbie and mating her with her outfit several years later. So it's a very happy story for everyone involved. But I bought her because I wanted her You're to You're happy, outfit. Meg's happy, Doggy Park Barbie's happy. Everyone's all good. Then, if that weren't enough, <laughs> in 2012, so a year after I already had made my collection of one Megs turned into three, I saw this lady on Dollar Lady's table for a dollar at the local flea market. She had horrible hair. I was like, I can fix that hair. I can make it look like new. And there's another fashion pack that they sell for a Meg, so I'll need a, I'll need a model for it. So I bought her, then I went on eBay, and I got this fashion pack box. Yep, dog gluttony at its finest. And then we have my last but not least, Meg. This is the one from the Teresa lot of 2016. Um, one of the first transformation videos on my channel. She is part of that lot. Now, the reason why this doll is special is because if I had not had access to eBay, if I hadn't been able to get this doll on eBay, she would have been the first Meg doll in the wild I would have found with her original outfit. And that makes her really special because if I didn't have the option to use eBay, she would have been it. And she's really gorgeous, and she's in really lovely condition, so we loves. Then we have my last two Hercules dolls, the Legends of Love set. So we have Herc over here, and then we have Meg. I got them in 2012, because, again, it's really on a Hercules kick, and I wanted to have this set because it's gorgeous, and I love the couple packs, and I love this outfit. I got them used on eBay. Um, they were a pretty good deal. I don't remember anymore what I paid, but it wasn't outrageous. I think it was like $30 or $40 for the set. 
they were used. And they were more or less complete. Yeah, but the only thing I'm missing is his sword and his little thingy, but um, it doesn't really matter to me. It bothered me more back then, but now I don't care. Then we have my Mary Poppins dolls. Classics, I guess you could say, Mary Poppins, and she has a reversible outfit, which is really neat. She came with cool stuff. Um, a friend of mine actually picked her up for me. Um, like, I paid her for this doll, but she picked me up this Mary Poppins, and then I let her keep the box because she wanted the box. So, um, that that's how I got this doll. I never really thought about getting a Mary Poppins doll before that, but she's in my Disney doll identification and price guide good book, which is how I got back into collecting her dolls. Her face is very similar to Aurora. Yes, I, it's the same head mold. Yeah. Um, so, but she she, she does remind me a lot of like my early days of collecting Disney dolls. And then I love the mini. I got her for $5 at the flea market in 2015. You can see the haul with her on my Flickr. It's one of the old ones. Yes, she is really cute. And I actually got her the same day as this 2004 Tinkerbell. I got them both for $5 the same day. Like, I swear, you get box dolls. In, like, weird little waves of really cheap box dolls. So now we're on to my Peter Pan dolls. <clears throat> so this is Flying Tinkerbell. Again, she's basically just a skipper, but that's why Colleen wanted her. We got her at an indoor flea market in 2011. Um, it was the same guy that sold me my dollhouse that you'll always see with my brats in it in the background of my videos. He sold me some of my Harry Potter stuff, too. Yes, and he sold me my boxed um, Ring in the New Year Hispanic Barbie. Formal yes. boss. Colleen saw her, and um, this isn't her outfit. Uh, this one on another Tinkerbell. But we already yeah, had the outfit. We've had since childhood. Like, I used to yes. dress my skin. So that's why we got her, costume. and she was my very first Peter Pan doll. Then we have uh, Flying Wendy from 1997. So she's also Flying Tinkerbell, but she's the earlier wave. She's the 97 one, this Wendy. We got her boxed the same day as Alice. Um, they weren't like super cheap, but they weren't super expensive. I like her because um, her newer head sculpt reminds me of Pizza Party Courtney. Yes, she's beautiful. <laughs> and I love her outfit. I love her short hair. I think she's wicked pretty. She's my favorite um, Peter Pan doll in my collection. Mm. And then we have my lovely Hasbro oh, actually, Peter Pan I know. He from is. Return to Neverland. He was sold with um, like alongside Jane. Now, I never liked Peter Pan, but <laughs> I, and I dev never liked the sequel, that's for sure, but I'm not picky when it comes to Disney dolls, and when I saw an adorable man doll, aka Peter Pan, for like $2 at the flea market, I had to get him, and he's really awesome. I love how animated he is. He's definitely one of my favorite, like, guy dolls we have for Disney movies. And as I said, I got her in 2015, boxed at the flea market. She's kind of um, just a random Tinkerbell doll they made for no reason, really. And I just love her outfit and her taller body and the color of her hair. It's like this beautiful yellow. And then we have um, my Jack Specific Rosetta doll. These are kind of like friends of Tinkerbell from like spin-off lines. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of like fairy dolls in general. And I never really cared much for like Tinkerbell's line because I mean I wasn't a big Peter Pan fan. However, I got Rosetta um, at the at Savers in a bag with other dolls, and I just couldn't turn her out because you know she reminds me of Tycho Ariel with the red yeah, hair. Yeah, so she's actually in my Flatiron tutorial, and she's in the same um, the our first official Dolly transformation video yes. with Shelley's American Girl Caroline. Yep, and so uh, she's a special place in our hearts. This is a Lady Lovely Locks dress she wears. And then this is uh, the Disney Store Vidya doll that we, we just got, got her in the Princess and the Pauper lot. And um, she's going to be going out for stain removal this week. So. I love Vidya. She's got these adorable little elf ears that just, oh my god, she is to die for. Colleen even wrote her fun fact on Flick. Yeah, I absolutely online. love Vidya. She's wicked cute. So now we're on to my um, Princess and the Frog dolls. Don't worry, we only have two more movies to do here. So these are both the 2009 Sparkling Princess Tiana dolls. They were also generically packaged as just like the Princess and the Frog, so like released when the movie came out. Now, I got my first Tiana, this was my first Tiana ever, along with that Peter Pan, the same day at the flea market for $2. It was at the in the fall of 2013, and I had always really wanted to see the Princess and the Frog really badly because of the old style animation because that's what I grew up with and I just generally prefer to the CGI. I do like the CGI too, but I'm nostalgic for the, the regular And animation. I feel like, you know, the storyline and Tiana's exotic appearance and the fact that it was about frogs, 
I feel like if that had been out when we were kids, that could have been our Aladdin. Okay, like, that yeah, like a big thing. And then, like African American print. Like I loved African American dolls as a kid, and the fact that like she's like the lone African American Disney princess makes her so awesome. She's beautiful. Um, I was really excited about that, so that's why I had to get her. And then her twin here, I got in the sweet Sunday surprises bin, which I talked about earlier, which was freebies. I obviously don't have her outfit, but I had this lovely Disney store ensemble for her to wear. And then this is just a 2009 Princess and the Prop Princess and the Frog doll, generically packaged. They had variations sold in this outfit and that outfit, and they both have the same face as you can see. But I love her blue outfit because I noticed with Disney movies, like with Aurora, you'll get a lot of pink. With Cinderella, you'll get a lot of blue. With Snow White, you get a lot of, lot of yellow and blue. And it gets really old and redundant, especially if you're displaying it. So I saw this doll my Mattel Flynn Rider back in 2016, I think, or 2015. And I just had to get her, love her, I had fun making her a hair accessory. This is my 2009 Ballerina Princess Tiana. I got her recently, she should look familiar. She was from the limbless lot of Memorial Day weekend this year. I had to make her a tutu and um, a matching, I didn't have to, but I wanted to make her a tutu and a matching hair piece because I didn't get her tutu. It was Memorial Day weekend as I mentioned. We were at the flea market, we saw some Monster High dolls we wanted to buy. They were missing some arms but we were still going to buy them because I was willing to get the parts. The guy selling them felt bad when he realized that they were missing limbs so he said take all the dolls on the table for like two bucks yes. and it was like amazing so Tiana was just one of the freebies then we have my two uh, Disney store wedding Naveen's so my first guy here we got him separately at the flea market I forget when um, but he was my first Naveen doll and by that point we had watched the movie and I mean Naveen is the best part of that movie like I die. Oh my god. <laughs> so we had to get him. Just one kiss unless you beg for more. <laughs> and then his twin over here at, in the Disney store lot um, in 2015 with a bunch of Disney store dolls and he was one of the few that had his outfit. So he's just a very handsome duplicate. You can never go wrong with Naveen. And then my third Naveen here is the um, 2010 Disney store guy. and. We got him on eBay, not separately. I've mentioned in other videos that I bought a 2008 like Target pack of Disney princesses online and they were used and he was just kind of a bonus doll in the lot and we both kind of wanted Naveen too so he was sort of the reason why we ended up settling on that lot. Oh no, yeah, like he was a big, it's funny because I didn't think of it in the other videos where we were talking about that pack. But whenever I see him, I remember how I particularly talked you into that lot because mm -hmm. I wanted Naveen. And then this is the Tiana from the Disney Store 2013 pack, which I talked about earlier. Um, she was my first Disney Store Tiana. I won't go into the whole story because we just talked about it on Merida. But I love her. She's gorgeous. And I like this dress because the like it looks very like lily pad-esque. It's gorgeous. I wanted to get um, Disney Store Tiana and Naveen dolls the day that we got a bunch on sale back in 2012. But I already had bought so much and I thought, well, I came here for Rapunzel dolls, so I've got to get them. And I should get dolls from movies I'm actually familiar with. But I really wanted them. And then this is the deluxe singing doll. We made a special trip to the Disney store for her because I, this is one of my favorite Disney movies of all time for sure. And um, I loved that they gave her this outfit. And like she came with cooking supplies, which if you know anything about us, we love doll food. So. It was just a really cool a cool scene for them to base a doll off of. And she did used to sing, but Colleen played with her too much and I think she broke the mechanism in her wrist and it was like I was making her sing like two days after we got her. Like a thousand times. Yeah, um so switches in the arms are not the best for singing dolls, but she's my favorite Tiana in my collection. And then the last dolls are my Tarzan dolls. I have two of the um like basic Janes. So growing up, I Remember when Tarzan came out, I became fixated on Jane. Every story we would go in, I would take a Jane doll and I would like hide her behind the other dolls because I was hoping that I could save up my allowance and buy one. Well, I ended up getting this lady on vacation that year. Um, Mom and Dad gave us money to spend on vacation and I bought Jane and there's actually a picture of me and this Jane doll on in our um, Dolly Tales dolls from our photo album. So you can check that out if you want to see the picture. Uh, that's one of the few 
pictures I have with a doll as a kid. And she was definitely my favorite for a long time. Mind you, I hadn't even seen Tarzan at this point. But I was obsessed with her. And I did cut off her little curls as a kid, which I regret. But she's most famous for being a salon owner in our <laughs> crazy camping game, as we call it. Our refugee game. Where she basically was Kid Corcady's sister and Ariel's best friend. And her and Ariel ran a salon together. And then... Ariel got wind that the Barbarians, which were the Mattel dolls, were on some war rampage and that Jane's sister, who was a, quote, fake Ian, was in danger. So Ariel, being the great friend she was, decided they should run away in her camper together. That was great. Yes, so that's Jane's legacy. I love her. And obviously she's in not the best shape. Like, she's missing a glove and she has cut hair. So I got this doll boxed for $5 at the flea market in 2014, I want to say. I got her the same day as my Generation Girl Dance Party Barbie, who's also boxed. She is magnificent. Oh, her little thing's coming off. I love her. I absolutely had to get her when I saw her boxed. And then we have Vine Swinging Gift Set Jane. This is not her shirt. This is her skirt, though. Always wanted this set as a kid. I still want Tarzan. Don't have them. This is a very hard set to get a hold of. I happened to get her um, at the flea market in 2015 or 2016. Um, this regular seller had her out, and I knew she wasn't the same doll as this lady because see how she has the bent arms and she doesn't. So I bought her, and then ironically, like a year later, we got a lot of doll clothes from him, and her skirt was in there. So thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see pictures or read information about these dolls, feel free to check out my Flickr. I'll link it below. And as always, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.